Hey folks, I want to show you really quick how you can speed up your translation process, which means the translation of your tables, columns and measures um, using a combination of tabular editor and my tiny little Excel tool. Let's take a look at it. I built a very small data model containing only four tables. Those are customers, calendar, stores and revenue. Um, as you can see, those words aren't English in my data model, those are German. Um, that's important because before you save this PBIX file for the very first time, you need to make sure that the language that comes from your data source is aligned with the model language that you specify under options and regional settings over here. This is the model language. Power BI doesn't recognize which language the objects have that you put into your data model, but you need to make sure that if your tables have German names and your measures and your columns too, um, you specify here that the model language is German. The model language is independent from the application language because you can create a Portuguese data model, but the language of your UI here in, in Power BI desktop is English. So that's really important before you press save in your PBIX file for the very first time. The first thing I want to do when I want to translate my data model into several different languages is I want to create those languages before I start translating tables, columns and measures. And um, therefore I open tabular editor two. I'm choosing the version two here because this one is for free. So everyone can repeat what I'm doing here. And I go to the translation folder and you can see my default language over here, which is DE minus DE for German, Germany. And um, the first question is, which languages can I use in Power BI? To answer that question, I go to the Power BI service and go to the gear icon over here and go to settings and go to language. And there comes this drop down. When I open this drop down, I can see 44 different languages that I can use to um, translate my data model for the Power BI service. Those languages are in their original, uh, written down the original language, which made it hard for me to notice that this is Arabic and this is Chinese simplified. Um, I started asking people on Twitter for help just because I didn't notice this tiny little link over here. When you click this link, you are sent to this website from Microsoft that solves the, the question, which language stands behind those signs here. Um, so now I know this sign stands for Chinese simplified and this sign stands for Chinese traditional and this is Hindi. But that's only the first step I need to take. What I need to know is which culture codes or language tags are behind those language because when you remind yourself of uh, the language specified in tabular editor, here doesn't stand German Germany here stands DE minus DE. So I need to know what this specific culture code is. Therefore, I created my Excel file on not only therefore, but this is one part of it. And um, let's first take a look at this cultures sheet. I created this table over here, where on the left side, you see the language written down in its English name and its name in its original language. And on the right side, you see the language tag or culture code. That was quite a bit of work because several languages have more than one single culture tag. And not every culture tag works in the Power BI service. For example, um, there are several culture tags for Chinese simplified. For instance, there's one with uh, ZH minus HK. That culture code is not recognized by the Power BI service. If I upload 
um, a translation with this culture code, I will not see uh, the Chinese language, I will see the default language, whatever it is. In my example, it's German. So I needed to check every single culture code against the Power BI service to make sure that all of those chosen 44 culture tags or culture codes work for my solution. Now I go to create culture. And in the first column here, I have the opportunity to choose a specific culture from this dropdown. And this one, of course, is based on the table I've shown you before. Um, if you choose one, you get this specific culture code. And not only that, you get in the last column, um, a C sharp code that you can copy. And as you might know, or maybe not, then you learn something new. You can go to tabular editor and go to advanced scripting. And if you're capable of writing C sharp, which I am not, um, you can based on the tabular object model, um, modify the, the data model using C sharp. Daniel Otukia, I hope I, I spelled the name correctly, um, Daniel, uh, was kind enough to show me how uh, I can add translations or uh, translate tables, columns and measures by using C sharp. So thank you, Daniel, for this. By pasting in this code and pressing the run button, take a look, look at the left side. I can add those translations just by pressing that button. So now I have the translations or sorry, the cultures in my data model, at least when I press save now. Um, but of course, my objects over here, no matter which of those languages I choose now, I choose Danish, have the default language because we haven't translated anything yet. So this is what I'm going to do now. I go back to my Excel file and go to the first sheet right after create cultures. So what you see over here is a table that's empty right now. And what we are going to do now is to get all the objects from the original data model into this table. Um, we have a sheet for tables, we have a sheet for columns, we have a sheet for measures. And of course, I don't want to get all those objects by hand um, from the data model into my file, I want to have it automatically. And to achieve this, I need two things. First of all, I go to tabular editor and I need to remember the local host, the process ID that you can find over here, the 62211. Second, I need to take that number and put it into my Power Query solution that I put into this Excel file. So I remember 62211. I go to Excel. And when you go to data and queries and connections, you see on the right side, a couple of Power Query queries. I double click the process ID over here. And I change the one that was still in here from the last time and override it by 62211. I press enter and I get a couple of warnings because now I try to connect to a different uh, instance of analysis services than I did the last time. So I go to the measure query and I'm asked to edit permissions. What I do now. I press edit permissions and I'm getting asked if I want to run this SQL query against this um, instance of analysis services. I want to do that. I run it. Um, I'm asked to edit my credentials. I press edit credentials and I just go to Windows here and press connect. So I have my single measure now in this table. And I do the same thing for tables and columns, added permissions, yes, run query. And I do the same thing for tables. That's it. Now I close the query editor. And I press refresh all. And now I get my tables. I get all my columns. 
and I get all my measures, in this case, only a single one. And now I can start translating. Those orange cells over here are the ones that need to be filled with um, translation text. But as I'm not capable of speaking even a word in Bulgarian or Chinese, um, I will switch files because I have another file where I already put in the translations. So I close this one and here's the one I prepared. So what I did is translating the words for the tables into Bulgarian, into Chinese, into Danish. And as I promised, there are two more languages that can be used, in this case, English and Italian. So we have the translations, which you have to do manually. But what you also get is, this done by formula is C sharp code that in this case would create you the table uh, translation. Now I have a bug in Excel. Okay. Um, the Bulgarian translation for the table calendar or calendar. And here the Chinese one. We have the same for columns and we have the same for measures. Now the last sheet, the last orange sheet, all translations kicks in. After you have translated all your objects, you can go over here and this table over here, and I still have the, the old translations in it. I, I just, for the demo purpose, kick it out. I can refresh this query and I get all the information, all the translations from the tables, from the columns and from the method sheet um, into this table. I have the code that's needed for um, tabular editor and I have two more columns to uh, being able to filter. Maybe I, I want to replace the translation I did for English or Bulgarian um, in a second attempt, but not all the others. So I can go to, let's take Italian and only get the Italian um, C sharp commands for translating the tables, columns and measures. In this case, I want to have everything. So I copy everything and it's 105 rows from um, this table to translate all the objects into those five languages. And I go back to tabular editor and I delete um, the code that created the translations and paste in the new code. And as you can see, it's a lot of work that you ha would have to do manually. So when I press the run button, immediately see, because I um, have pre chosen Danish, that the words have changed already. And you see it a lot clearer when I choose uh, Bulgarian, because it's not the same letters that we use here in, in Germany or uh, the US. And uh, yeah, if I press save now, my model is translated. And I go back to Power BI Desktop and I load this up to the Power BI service and load it into a premium workspace. That's needed, premium per capacity or premium per user. Wait a couple of seconds and go to that workspace or to that report. And the language I've chosen is English. Now, as you can see, while in my PBIX file, let's go back for a second. The measure name over here is Summe Umsatz. I go back to the Power BI service and I see total sales because the language I've chosen here in settings is English. And if I go to Danish, we also created the, the translation for Danish and go back to the report. I will see some that sulk. And if I choose a language that we haven't translated into, like 
Let's take Vietnamese. We will see that the default language kicks in again because we have no translation for Vietnamese yet. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have fun translating your data model.